You gotta start over. I'm starting over. Um, I just dedicated listeners, if you will recall, I think it was our first episode of the second season was about Daria Vernon's Get Thee Off My Lawn. Was that the first wow, throwback? I have no clue. I know we did an episode on it. We oh we sure did. Yeah. I just don't remember which one it was. I think about it- that book frequently. I don't think about it as frequently as I should, frankly. Um, yeah. I just, like, remember it. And I'm like, oh, I should read that. And then I don't. So that's where I need to improve. <laughs> and then I don't. Well, listen. I – so, okay. So, I just – Mm. Mm. Is it a coincidence that The Little Mermaid is now streaming? I didn't and, know it was now streaming. I, yeah. I, 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 I think it's weeks fate. ago and bought – uh the i i just bought it on amazon when oh it was, was like it available bucks. it oh, was but nice. you had to pay for it um gotcha. but i wanted to watch it so i did as you should as i should um mm-hmm. so no that's not why however i was looking at the calendar and international talk like a pyro day is on its way which is as you may know one of my favorite holidays and i was like oh shoot i gotta get on my pirate romances in preparation some of which are historical yeah. however i have a katie robert like, I don't mm. think it's pirate, but it's like a vampire mermaid something or other on one on dark. Yeah. Yeah. Because the next book is a selkie and something else. But yeah, I don't know what it is. I think they're kind of pirates of that one. Yeah. Well, and it the... was like piratey vibes looking. Hold on. I have. Yeah. The... It's I think it's. It's dark. like on dark seas or on dark. I think it's on dark waters. Something on dark, dark waters. waters. I have the. um. All right. I thought I did. I mean, I know I have it on NetGalley. Um, hunt on Dark got- Waters. Hunt, yes. And do I know what it's about? No. But it's like paranormal and it, it has a ship on it. Whatever. Mm-hmm. But then I remembered mm-hmm. har, har, har. Daria Vernon has a novella. Mm-hmm. And it's a, like, it's not, she's not called a mermaid. She's called a Morgan, but like, she's a mermaid. And it's not historical because it's fantasy, but it, it it's historical vibes because he's yeah. like a, a pirate sailor. Yeah. And they decide to go, like, they, they're like, oh, we got to feed the Morgans so you can go be bait for them. But then and he's, he's like, cool. singing. No, he's not cool with it, but he doesn't believe in Morgans. So he's like, uh, so be it. I'm going to live. But his voice does to I her. I lived, bitch. Yeah. No, literally. His voice does to her what her voice does to humans oh for some reason uno reverse and they end up like on this island and boy does she vaporize some evil dudes with (laughs) her voice it's so violent but also (laughs) there's like they fuck which i was like how are they gonna do this and do i really understand it no but there's like interesting uses of breath play Cause she's like, I have an idea. Let's go underwater. And he's like, I cannot breathe. <laughs> and she's like, Just hold your breath. <laughs> Listen, um, got turn to Michael. Phelps. It was something like ninety pages. It took me like an hour and a half or something to read, and I had the best time. Thank God. So, she also has like a clockmaker one or something. I don't know. I don't know. She, I forgot. I was yeah. like, oh, I need to check out her backlist after we read Get Thee Off My Lawn. And then I promptly forgot about it. And then I read this one and was like, wow, it wasn't just that one. I just, undying mm-hmm. devotion earned. She's, I feel like, I mean, granted, I've only read one of her books, but it's kind of like the Alexandra Vasti effect of just like good writing. <laughs> it is good like, writing. Can, can just like do anything, like sell you on anything. I'm just saying, if you got me with a historical romance yeah. involving swan mm. theft. And you mm. also got me with a fantasy romance mm-hmm. involving basically a a siren vicious mermaid situation. Um mm-hmm. you're checking boxes left and right, frankly. <laughs> uh so anyway, be on the lookout for more pirate romances. Yeah, I have way. to start those. But I am like not really in the reading vibe mood right now. I'm not either. But I am listening to Lisa Rain's, um, the Highlander one. And that's what a great book! So far. What I a know, great narrator! Ne- never right, never cross, never cross a Highlander. Highlander. Yeah, so that's that's getting me through. But yeah, it's like September sixth, and I've like finished my one Stacy read reread, Sky O'Malley, and I'm like halfway through this one. 
Yeah. I did a couple novellas. Mm-hmm. Um, because I also have been slumping, so I was like, yeah. let's just do something short that I can do, like, in one, yeah. two sittings. Well, it's like, I looked back at my reading tracker from July, and, and no, my God, it's September, August, <laughs> um, and it was so many rereads. <laughs> like, I barely read anything new, and that's, you know, I just, I don't know. I'm having a hard time, like, finding new things that are good that are in like audio form yeah I'm or it's not even that time. like yeah i've read some good things it's just like i don't know desperate or real housewives of <laughs> new york and new jersey are just calling my name all the real housewives dude it's so addicting okay well there's mine just is something formula one so there's something you have so, your <laughs> but see mine is there's something so soothing about seeing rich people be so unhappy i mean because then it, it makes me be like fair yeah, I'm, I'm okay in my hobble <laughs> I mean, is there not something so soothing about watching rich men drive fast cars and be so stressed about I, and you're in point you, yeah. eight seconds after the next and guy? And you're like, makes my worries look minuscule. It does. It's great. It does. It's great. I'm like, job searching. No, no, no. No. Uh, at, at least I'm not a bazillionaire who's really stressed about this mm-hmm. car going fast. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I mean, I they just make some wild decisions on these shows. Yeah. And- I'm just so fascinated. <laughs> and Andy Cohen <laughs> in the in the like reunions. I mean that man, that poor man. I mean he gets paid like t- 10 million a-, a year. I mean he's doing fine. But like he's tested to his limits. I would I would cave and break down. <laughs> but it's it's such good TV television. If you will. I mean I got Dana hooked on Mm -hmm, Drive to Survive, and she's been, like, kind of messaging me periodically Mm -hmm. to keep me updated on where she is. (laughs) And the other day – so there's, like, the – I feel like I briefly mentioned to you, but I'm going to assume you don't remember. There was this scandal with, like uh, – it was called the Force India team at the time, and, like, the guy that ran it or owned it was an Indian guy, but then all of a sudden he was, like – committing millions of dollars of fraud Hmm. and so he had to like (laughs) leave india and go hide out in england but like the government was after him and there was a lot of white collar crime happening and eventually just like i don't know if he got arrested or what new jersey exactly and then the team was owned by nobody for a while and was just run by like the the you know like a group of people like just doing their best yeah and Lance Stroll's dad, who was previously a part owner in a different team, came in and bought the team and made his son one of the drivers. Honestly, nepotism sometimes slaps. Well, he's I mean- been consistently performing horribly this season. <laughs> like, he came in last, I think, in beautiful, like, in, not in the race, but in qualifying. And at this point, everybody's like, why is he still here? Because his dad I- owns the team. That's why. <sighs> I mean, sometimes you just have to applaud the art of not giving a single fuck. <laughs> like, that's so true. <laughs> that's so true. Uh, yeah. I just, you gotta wonder. Like, at, at some point, Lance has to just be like in the mirror, waking up in the morning, just looking at himself, being like, how'd I get here? I mean, look, I haven't seen much from him, but the couple of, like, clips from interviews I have seen, he looks like he just does not give a shit about anything anymore. I don't remember. You thought he he was very cute. You named him Paolo. Oh, no. Did I lay my sword at the feet of a bad driver? (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, he's the one with the... Yeah, okay. I lay my sword. (laughs) (laughs) You can tell him. I am a hilt deep. In the Highlander romance right now. I love that book. We, uh, I'm having a great time. Fingers crossed because we haven't like officially made plans. Uh, but we yeah. did talk to Lisa Rain and she said she would definitely be interested in coming on the pod. Um, so do keep a lookout for that yes. future episode, which again, no official plans have been made, but hopefully. Oh, uh, yeah. Cute little Nepo baby, Lance. <laughs> love that for you, Paolo. Same to me. <laughs> I made it with my tears. Oh, that's no, fun. I can't. I can't. Oh. 
Oh, that's like Dana's messaging me and she's like, oh my gosh, one of the like team principals, Williams is a, there's a woman in charge. Mm. Guess I'm rooting for the underdog because Williams, except for, I mean, this year they have a really fast car, but notoriously lately they've been like a garbage team mm. with garbage cars. And she's like, whoa, the, the team principal is a woman. Looks like I'm rooting for an underdog. And I had to be like, I wouldn't get too attached to her because uh, uh, she's only there for a... I don't remember oh, how many seasons, you, she's in the but past she she gets yeah yeah she uh, she gets essentially fired. Like they bring in somebody else. I just I don't know. I mean, I am competitive to a to a point, but like there's something I think that I would love so much about being on the worst team <laughs> because like if I'm consistently if it's like a consistently bad like everyone just expects it to be bad, like you know. That's a great point. What am I doing? Like, I'm so sorry if you're, like, a, a Baltimore Orioles fan. So sorry, people, listeners, if you are. But I have to have, at some point, I mean, these baseball players, you know, want to play baseball, unlike me. But, like, let's say if I got to the major leagues somehow. And I was, like, so I'd be so comfortable on a team that's just not trying to do much. I get paid. <laughs> not, like, if I do well, I'm applauded. If I do poorly, it's like, ah, uh, you know, par for the course. It's big. Um, I'm I mean, a I guess, pessimist yeah. because yeah. because then anything is a pleasant surprise. Yeah, exactly. Energy. Exactly. Like, I just, I, I mean, I was a kid on the sports team who was like, hey, coach, why don't I stay on the bench? Oh, I yeah. think you got some players out there that would really love to play and I'll just sit. I mean, I think I told you when I did Powder Puff. Uh, football uh, yeah. the one year and I was in for like three plays and that was as much as I wanted yeah. to be in yeah I already I just... got body slammed to the ground in the co- over the course <laughs> of those three plays so like they pulled me out and I was like I am good thank you so much for this opportunity I will be wearing this super cute jersey to school to prove that I am cool yeah I like I'd be competitive with like other baseball fans but in no way shape or form would I be a competitive like ball player <laughs> That's it's not quite the same because Mercedes dominated for many years and is yeah. still like in the top few. Yeah, but they have not been as good this year as mm-hmm. in previous years because you know Max Verstappen hasn't God, Max. lost a race in ten. He just made history by winning ten races in a row and breaking the previous record. So you know, but uh, I was messaging my uh, my brother and sister in law because they mm-hmm. are the ones who got me into it during this past race. And apparently my niece, <laughs> because my sister-in-law is like, there's a lot of shouting going on in this house right now. Because um, I guess they were watching it with friends too. So like mm. a lot of shouting going on. And apparently my niece was like, yeah, I like being a Mercedes fan because I'm not stressed. Like they're going to come in. I mean, George Russell came in like fifth and Lewis yeah. was sixth or so. You know, they were kind of down yeah. a little bit because they just haven't been performing as well this year. But there was no stress. It yeah. was just, you know, they're doing fine. That's That's exactly like... It's when I get invested, like let's say the twins. I mean, Minnesota sports, you you gotta you gotta know pain to be a Minnesota sports fan. Um and so like I was really invested in I mean in that's them. being a Ferrari fan, so I, I get that. <laughs> and it was like it was like taking a toll because I was like, why are these bad things happening to yeah. good people? Yeah. Um I have never been then... stressed watching sports yeah. until this past race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like I mean, this year they're doing fine. Last year, the year before that, not not great. But I felt like I was like relieved of so much stress. I was like, if they win, they win. If you know they lose, that's bound to happen. So I'm like, you know, that makes sense. I'm not surprised. <laughs> it makes sense. Like I just, I've gotten so dejected. Like there are always gonna be injuries. Like Yankees are just gonna exist. That and is quite the literally the experience of a Ferrari fan over the <laughs> yeah. past few years. Yeah. The pit stop's gonna be bad. <laughs> yeah. The strategy's gonna be bad. Bullpen gonna not not be well, it's it never like it's in tandem. Like hitting never is at the same time as like a good bullpen. Yeah. And then if you have good hitting, then your pitching can't save you or like t- like save a lead or anything. So it's just like get to a certain point and you're like, I can't I can't do it. You don't have the power. Look, Carlos Sainz Sainz signs I know how to say his name, I swear. Carlos Sainz came in third. And go ahead. Ferrari fans lost their goddamn mind. See? Exactly. So used to 
not say mediocre, but let's just say mediocre because I can't think of any other word. And then like you get you get third and you're happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Love that. Uh okay. I don't want to. Listen, I don't want to fight with you. And that is what I am bringing into this energy. Or the energy, rather, that I am bringing to this chat. Hear me out. I have no idea how to rate this book. Because you're going to hate this so much. I got to the end of it and was very tempted to be like, fuck it, five stars. I actually have never been so disgusted by a book. Like, but also, like, it was just so repetitive. Like, she had the same plot, like, five times in a row. Like, she gets, she, like, it just happened so often. And I was like, I hate this so much. I listen. Oh, I. Not with you hating it, because I understand why you hate it. I think we just have different. Yeah, I I mean, I knew so soon that I wasn't built for it. And I was like, I've I think never once been I so got close over the initial DNA shock in of like it, but the Dudley he didn't even get. He literally got to go fuck lettuce. I mean, her name was La- 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 lettuce. Okay, I don't but know. but let's remember this is one of two books that focus on Sky O'Malley, and the second book she somehow gets embroiled in a conflict between Elizabeth and Mary, Queen of Scots. That means me I want to vomit. <laughs> What was his first name? Robert? Dudley. Yeah, it was Robert Dudley. She also had another Robert in there. I'm like, what are you doing, Bertrice? Was a, he, that there was, was the real Robert. Dude. There was Robert Small and there was Robert. And I'm like, Can how did he just die? get some different names in here? I hope he was like castrated and then beheaded, honestly. Um, it just says he'd been suffering from a recurring stomach ailment and was on his way to Buxton to take the waters and never made it. I hope he died in a toilet. <laughs> like inside, like well, head first. To be fair, I mean, he probably was a garbage person. However, that was a fictional version of him. Honestly, so he didn't do that we know of. I simply, his name is Mud. I, I can't, <laughs> I can't. This is this is my history book. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my history. Oh, he apparently and... marries lettuce. Yeah, so he gets a happy ending. Literally, yeah, in the book. he gets to go. He gets happy. to go fuck her. Like he was just like happy. We don't know that it was happy. To be clear, I mean, I think that he never I, got to I, be I, king. I, I, but he didn't die. Well, in the book that a I real read. person. So Bertrand, I don't Paul care. She didn't have to off. do that. She could have just made a fake person. But everybody else was real. Sky O'Malley was not. Real. Okay, but Elizabeth was real. But she could have just said had a different person. She didn't have to but have she, a. Li- I mean, she had a real favorite guy. I just think that putting Elizabeth and Dudley in a book that otherwise else is complete fiction makes no sense. Like I get people do that. Like I get like the I mean, Queen's Opera like, in these books, like other books standard do. Standard historical romance practice, yeah. But they play such a huge part. And, like, uh, such a terrible part that I'm like, okay, if you make him so terrible but you're not going to kill him because he was a real person, I'm like, I don't understand that. Well, not everyone has your you have to murder horrifically every villain. But he didn't get anything yeah. done. Like, he didn't even get – like, nothing was done to him. That we know of. Again, but there's I don't a whole care second that, book. <laughs> I'm not wh- – literally, I was not told at the end of this book that I need to read another one to know what happens to him. So there's, and, like, eight books – or something. Um, first of all, you first... have a great time reading those. You I can will come not. back and you can give me a book report because you had so I much fun with this. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I would like. I am so, so cool. Like I am all re- like I. Ha- I'm in the middle of like alphabetizing all my books, and I like I have them all like stacked, and it's like a whole chaotic mess. And um, my apologies. It's six books. The first two are about Sky, and that's about six and a half books too many. The third one is about Khan, Khan O'Malley. Um, I don't even know who that is. I believe is, isn't it her brother? I don't know. Oh, or it might be uh, one of her son. Well, no, I don't know. She just was having kids left and right. They it's were either, dying left and right. It's either her brother or one of her um, first son. No, because then he would have. It, must, it wouldn't. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be, be O'Malley. Brother. It must be one of Anne's. 
son, like not the full brother, yeah. but the, one of the, the ladies. The 13-year-old child bride. Sure, sure. That. The fourth one is about Sky O'Malley's magnificent daughter, Velvet. I thought you were going to say her magnificent small tiny nipples and breasts. No, no, no. Oh, uh, mm. she got the first two books dedicated mm. to those. I think it um, requires like a separate novella, really. I don't was just in love with recall them. her having a daughter named Velvet, but no. that's what it says. Um, the fifth mm. one is about who is this valentina i recognize that name i think but that could also be from the real housewives of new jersey (laughs) that Um, that name could definitely be from that show uh well it's not her daughter because apparently a deathbed confession reveals that her true father might not have been lord bliss but the lustful sultan morad of istanbul hmm um can't imagine how oh her aunt beautifully that holds up Mm. her aunt sky o'malley um Mm. there are just more of them in the world they're just creating children are a lot of them and then the sixth one so bad is princess yasmin yeah nothing's coming who flees who is Velvet's daughter and the granddaughter of Sky? So there you have it. Like, I was literally like, I'm in the process of getting rid of all my Bertree small books. Like, I don't even want them on my shelf. Like, I can't. First of all, welcome to Romancer TBR. Oh, dear. Um, we are, <laughs> we are, uh, hilt deep already in, um, uh, what's it called? Sky O'Malley by Bertree Small. <laughs> the name of the heroine. You know, if I could, like, smack my head against a wall and forget I ever read that book, like, I would. Like, I was a- I've was, actually been, like, as close to traumatized from a book as, like, I could be. I read it as fast as I could humanly read that book, and it was still too slow because it I just kept going. I do think there were chunks in the middle that dragged for me, but I did not. The, the thing is with this one, it wasn't like The Flame and the Flower, which I thought was just flat boring. Like, this one, I understand the, like, plot, like, not line, but, like, I, there were things I was like, oh, that's happening. Like, oh, he's fucking her incestuous, like, guy. Like, okay, cool. That's fun. Uh, It was terrible, and I kind of wanted to die. But, like, you I was like, oh, I, 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 I didn't expect Claire to just, like own a brothel and then just fuck him and then never talk place. about it again and then it wasn't even like she just it just never popped in there again. like he never like he didn't even reckon with it like he didn't know who she was she just knew and then like the last time her name was oh. ever mentioned was right after he fucked her no and so like yeah he, like dragged her e-book. no he dragged her through the streets and left her to a crowd of angry uh people i i was for sure it didn't happen him. because when queen elizabeth called him and was like you guys need to get the fuck out of england for a while he was like can i hear me out can i deal with that brothel mistress and she was like we don't want to hear about it which was basically code for i don't want to deal with that shit so like you do whatever you want as long as it doesn't get back to me and then he dragged her through this so at least there the woman gets absolutely brutalized but dudley <laughs> the man can just go and fuck other women at the end that's fine cool um but like i just like there were things that were like surprising and like interesting how they were like like they were like oh god like a gotcha moment i was like oh i I've, I've been got several times um so like it to me was more interesting than the flame on the flower but it was several times over way more disgusting and like horrid (laughs) and like i don't use the word disgusting lightly like i don't think i've said a book in recent like time is like disgusting this book had just so much gratuitous disgustingness (laughs) that i was like i can't even Process see, it. This to me is why bodice rippers live in the same part of my brain as like horror or thriller. I think yeah. that those there's that like you want you, not you, but you, the yeah. reader of bodice rippers, want to experience the it, range of like danger and horror. I mean, bestiality and incest is just not anywhere on the spectrum of, like, anything. Like, I can't 
no, and won't. Well, they did not go through with the bestiality, and it was the villain, to be clear. Who also didn't get anything done to him in this book in 500 pages. Not every villain <laughs> gets dealt with in every book, though. Sometimes the world is not good. And that's why, to me, I'm like, if you can write a fiction book, you can at least handle that. <laughs> that's not really what this was. This, to me, okay. It is a romance. Uh, but if you told me this is romantic historical fiction, I would buy that categorization equally as much. Because it, yeah. it gives me, so like, I've never read it, and I want to be clear that I have never read it, so I can't speak on the book, but Ken Follett wrote The Pillars of the Earth, and I watched that miniseries many years ago. Mm -hmm. So do I have a, a strong memory of it? No. But there was a miniseries called The Pillars of the Earth based on the book, and Eddie Redmayne and What's-Her-Face that played Peggy Carter were in it, and mm -hmm. I ate it up. So whatever. But it was, it, those two things really connected in my brain, because it was like historical epic fiction set in like well that was like the 12th century or something versus mm -hmm. this was like 15th 16th century know. somewhere in there when it was still okay to marry a 12 year old sure sure i mean some united states you probably still can but like yikes more frowned upon sure uh and it, it it follows technically i think there is a main character it follows like this guy building this cathedral but like there's a large cast of characters that, and you follow mm -hmm. them over a course of many years and there's a romance and she has this like horrible husband who's super terrible to her and they have bad sex all the time and then she has this affair with Eddie Redmayne and like she gets pregnant and like all these things happen and so there are like a lot of horrible things because it's like mm -hmm. the 12th century and wherever and they're building a cathedral but then yeah. it does have a happy ending and there are like these romantic and erotic elements to it. And that just felt very, like, and it's classified as historical fiction. Mm -hmm. And it has that similar, like, kind of epic saga, like, story yeah. involving a lot of people carried out over the course of many years. I feel like that's kind of, like, The Great, even. I mean, I wasn't, like, have you seen The Great? Yeah, I've seen, like, the first season. Yeah, so, like, yeah, it's, like, a less comedic Catherine. Yeah. I mean, the great. But even that, like, I didn't enjoy that. So, like, it's just not my cup of tea. Right. Um, and I like Elf. Like, I liked parts of the show, but it was just not, not it for me. But um, I think it, it just appeals to a di like, yeah, more people who are compelled to read again more like historical fiction yeah. or thrillers or like it's it's satisfying a different. Yeah like adventure and danger and horror and also a lot of sex it was way dirtier than i thought it was gonna be i mean it is she is like the is the, ero the queen of yeah. erotic romance um on the one book i'm keeping of her because i like the cover um on conquered she's called the lusty new york times bestseller i mean it so that that's kind of a baller move but um i read the back of that book and i was already <laughs> like terrified I mean, like i'm never gonna read some it. wild things in some of these sex scenes well there's a donkey there's like a bestiality donkey moment in the book bianca and i own that and i'm like i but but hate. is it actually a beast the, the closest thing that came to actual bestiality to me in this one besides them almost raping a girl with a dog which again didn't happen and he's a bad guy it just was supposed to happen i will say was what after they after they raped and ruined several yeah. <laughs> virgins yeah 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 it was a bad thing to be clear it wasn't for funsies um there was the scene where he first neil has sex with Constanza or whatever her yeah. name is the first time yeah. and she's like I want you to take me like that stallion just took that mare and then later like fantasizes about the horse well, she bleeding. had sure she... sure she was mentally ill um or they claimed technically because in the book she was a whore because of genetics because her mother was also sure, a whore sure <laughs> you know genetic nymphomania yeah it's a thing <laughs> yeah this all adds up like the the when Sorry. the Maria like when her mother thing I was like that was a plot twist. It um, was a plot twist because we have gotten conflicting stories yeah. already. Yeah, I was like, huh? So like, I think she could weave a compelling story if I was at least one percent compelled in anything else going on in the book. Like, I at least felt like she could, if she was ever like wanting to write on like a a, a nice book. I think she could be a good writer in that sense. 
But I like, suspect that she would argue a nice book is not interesting. And that is okay. I want to be the most boring person if I never have to read a book like that again. Like, I mean, I, I will say this for it because I wrote down things that I actually did appreciate. And the main things were I thought it was a way more interesting exploration at various points of consent and rape in and outside of marriage than The Flame and the Flower was. Or yeah. even arguably better than Prisoner of My Desire, because that was just, like, rape for the sake of rape. And this one, you got a lot of levels to it, because there was also marital rape. Yeah, it was just so weird. But, so you have this exploration of consent. The other thing I liked was the exploration of the relationship between sex and love. Because I think there were a lot- well, that and, uh, I think it took a more interesting stance on- loving multiple people than a lot of romance novels because most you get like the one guy yeah it was so watered down by the end i was like i can't but it was also so it was also so insta love with him like with with neil at the very beginning but by the end of that book it had been i just think she just like it just kept being like the same plot of she like finds someone has sex with them has to like gets ripped away finds another person has sex with them gets ripped away finds another person has sex with them gets ripped away i don't think that's another true. person i mean that's how it goes well but it's not because some of them she has sex with against her will or and then is i'm talking about too. like the main ones like the well Neil sure but so in the case one of one yeah 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 khalid yeah and there was the adam jeffrey Neil again. Sure, but in each of them there are di- well, and Adam is an outlier. That's where I think mm-hmm. the relationship between sex and love gets really interesting because you go from Jeffrey who is arguing that you're having sex with me without having any feelings and therefore you're a whore. And then she eventually falls in love with him, which I never supported her on because fuck that guy, but like whatever. Um to Adam who becomes kind of a regular lover for a little while and he does love her, but he knows from the start that she does not have those feelings towards him, but she remains friends with consistently. Mm -hmm. And so you can see a clear growth from like her buying into Jeffrey's kind of like, you're a whore because you're only having sex with me, not loving me and being very manipulative about it to her being like, actually I am just going to bang this guy because he's hot. And I want to. And then eventually coming back to Neil, who she has to, like, forgive in order to have sex with him. Yeah. I mean, that's great that you found that interesting. I simply was like, please stop. I just think it was such an interesting, like... She takes all these different stances on, like, what is sex without love and what is... The, what are those two things together and it's not necessarily condemning it the whole way through i'm not saying that she's right 100 percent on every mm-hmm. but like it changes consistently and boy does that woman get around and i respect it sometimes she's raped and that's a different thing Often. but like yeah yeah brutally on page multiple it was just it was so weird like i I don't know. I just don't think that it was that weird in the sense that there are all kinds of like horror and thriller novels that go into all kinds of other violence in gruesome, gory detail. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm also not reading those. Well, so like, but, I'm I just mean, it's saying just we don't automatically that, condemn those. I mean, I'm saying it's weird to me that like I just this book just didn't make any sense. Fair enough. Like, I just think. Th- it just felt very repetitive and the relationships felt very like flat. See, I had the opposite. I thought that each of those relationships was very distinct. They were distinct. They were different and they functioned differently. Right. But I just didn't buy any of like the emotion in any of it. Well, I mean – it, she did have three different marriages over the course of many mm-hmm. years, over the course of one book, and it had that, like, epic quality to it. So I don't think you were yeah. ever going to get the level of depth that you are in a 
book that is dedicated to only one relationship, but I think this is no. a different kind of it, I mean it's like an epic rather than what yeah. we're used to. And that's just not my genre. Thing. Yeah. Sure. Well, but that's what way back to the beginning. I think once I real cuz the the description of this book online is very it's so vague, vague. And it's because how do you describe that book? Um but I, I think know. once I was past the first few chapters and I realized that 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 it wasn't just like she falls in love and it's like a one rom- romantic relationship and we're done type of situation mm-hmm. and that it was gonna be that like saga I think once I realized that I was able to shift into like my expectations were very different mm-hmm. and then it was just kind of like you know what I'm here for the ride I think that was the point when I on Goodreads updated I'm not built for this is when I realized that exact same thing. I was like, I'm not built for that. <laughs> and I wasn't. I was broken. I was broken by it. You know, I got to give it to her because I have read some wild historical romances. I have read Flying Machines and rap- Rescues from Towers After Multiple Kidnappings. I have read people going all over the world and ending up stranded on islands with penguins. The Windflower. There was like it was a pirate romance. There was a squid in a bucket that was being kept as a pet. Malaria came out of nowhere. Gotta love malaria. Uh, like I have read some wild ass historical romances, but this one has got to take the cake. I, I read Passion. Yeah. With his cervix breaching dick. But this one, I was like, I have never read a book that has taken me on as wild of a ride as this one did. And for that, I must doff my cap. I do agree that it was so wild. Like, nothing – like, because I, I had to read the summary, and I was like, maybe there's, like, a different summary somewhere. Nope. And no. And I was like, oh, uh-oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know how to write a summary for that book. She was kidnapped by pirates so immediately. There were multiple, like, oh, is Neil dead? No. He's just – in the fields with a former child. Sure. Sure. Well, aren't we all former children? I know. To be fair. She was like a fresh former child. There was a lot of honey oven and man root. There Two was of my a new lot of favorite honey oven is by far my new favorite. Honey oven. Uh, uh, um, I've like encountered man root before. Honey sure. oven was new. Honey um, oven was I new, just yeah. the amount of like small her breasts. There was and a nipples. lot about her breasts and nipples. I That's very true. Especially at the very beginning of the book when she was 15, which was my, a choice. Uh, my favorite thing in these, like, <laughs> older books, and even some – some uh, I've encountered it in some more recent ones, is when they're, like, her tiny teeth. And I'm like, <laughs> is she a little mouse? What do you Double mean? Nipple? Like, everything about her, so, like, including her teeth? Like, she's just so tiny? Teeth? I think it's to indicate that she is going to stick. Because, like, when I was little, I had giant-ass buck teeth, and I had to yeah. grow into my teeth. So maybe it's to indicate that, like – this is as it, big as she will get. Yeah, I think it like it's just so funny to me that like they even have to like yeah <laughs> reduce the size like yeah. her cute little small teeth. I'm like, why? I... <laughs> what really like, got me ugh. was um the part where Dudley was making her essentially play out his daddy fantasies. Yeah, because this is like 15th century England or whatever. He made her call him Papa. <laughs> And I couldn't – I know he was, like, basically raping her, but I was cackling. Basically. Papa? Papa. For yeah. some – I know those are the same, like, Daddy. thing. Yeah. Not hot, though. Daddy, hot. Papa, horrifying. Well, someone with Dudley in their name. It's a, good, it's, a, it's a great point. That's not, that's not ever going to happen. It's a great point. But, like – yeah, at that point, I kind of just... My last note out of all of my many notes, which were just things that shocked me, yeah. um, is I don't know why breastfeeding, breastfeeding would surprise me now. Oh, yeah, I wrote that down. I was like, oh, Caroline's going to have a good time with that. That's like not the, by far. It's one of the most normal things that happens in this book, yeah. but I was shocked. I was like, breastfeeding? Yeah. This yeah. is after the honey oven. This is after his monster sex, which, to be clear, is about Dom's monster penis, not about literal monster intercourse. And that penis being inserted so 
violently and ambitiously into his sister. So true. And also notably into her ass, which is how you yeah. know that a guy is a villain is when he's into yeah. ass play. But didn't – No, no, no. But sorry. Also, not but ass the, play. I was going to say because the one guy like shoved his finger sure, up. Sure, sure, sure. Sodomy specifically. Yeah. Because she was like, man. you boy lover or boy fucker or boy something or another to, to the Dudley the, guy. the Greek. Yeah. yeah. And then she was like, but then we – yeah, Greek. And then she was like – and then they had – Right. So like she's referencing the uh, pederasty, I think. The like older Greek yeah. men taking young mm-hmm. male lovers to be like fuck you but the finger up the butt was fine mm-hmm. that's not and that was Khalid. that was the yep Khalid. yeah um my f- only quote that i like and will consider getting on a sticker from this book <laughs> consider the- getting on a sticker <laughs> is it was from jeffrey don't like him hate him with a passion sure but i sure is it the same quote from him that i wrote down i would love to find out I sure had to rewind, and I listened to it again, and I was like, I can't believe I'm listening to something again in this book. Um, look at me, my hot little bitch. I fall in love with you, bitch. <laughs> like, Mine, same scene, because the quote I wrote down was, I've fallen in love with you, bitch, and I'll not take you yeah. like a whore. i fall fallen in love with you, bitch. It's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it did. <laughs> that look at part, me, like, my hot what little bitch. <laughs> I've fallen in love with you, bitch. I... Yeah. There's a if you've ever seen the movie uh, music and lyrics, um, it has uh, what's his name, uh, Hugh Grant, Drew Barrymore, and there's a scene they were like writing songs, and there's a scene where they're like riffing on a song that this like songwriter guy is doing, and he's like something about like a hot little witch, and like all I could think about <laughs> was this hot little bitch in that hot little witch song, <laughs> and like. And then Hugh Grant singing it because he had to sing it at one point. And like, I, but like, truly though, I mean, I've fallen in love with you, bitch. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so funny. Like, in context, not great. Um, I personally, I think it's hilarious in context because that's also when he's like, oh, you're having sex with me without feelings. Yeah. Like, I mean, you he just was so bad. Whore. And then he it's like, so well, I'm going to fuck you like a whore. And she's like, please do not. And then he's like, no, like, did she, you know what? Did she I'm ever... falling in love with you, bitch. I'll not take you like a whore. It was just their whole relationship was so weird. This, by the way, was sometime after um another quote that I wrote down, which is from I don't know if it's their very first meeting or when they were first getting to know mm-hmm. each other, that little period of time. Um, which was oddly enough, he liked intelligent women. <laughs> and that made me cackle. <laughs> oddly enough. <laughs> So odd. Oddly enough, he liked intelligent women. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure. Sure. That is odd for him, honestly. He also goes from being like a terrible guy who sends his wife into the country because she keeps giving him daughters. Yeah. To being like, if you didn't know that chunk of his past, a, a pretty chill guy. Yeah, I mean, there was the part where she was, like, trying to kind of, I don't know if it was, like, breaking up with him or, like, they were at, like, that, in the room, and then he, like, raped her, basically. I don't I mean, by the end, I didn't by think the he end, ever she, actually raped her. By the end, she was into it, but, like, I mean, she, I mean, at least he was, like, being violent about it, like, oh, making her, like, come back to him. Uh, it was in, like, a, I don't know. There was, like, a point where, like, I thought she was going to, like, leave him. I mean, she was, it was, it was like, about- the, it was, like, the little bit, it was, like, in that scene. Oh, I don't know. I don't either. So I thought we were going to be done with him, and then she just got married to him and loved him. And I was like, oh, oh, well, I knew she was going to marry him. I had, I had read a synopsis, so. Mm. I was like, oh, cool. Nice. That makes sense to me. I mean, I, who's to say? I mean, I she mean, also married Neil, and Neil definitely raped his first wife. Uh, yeah, I was not a fan of Neil. He mm, no. was not not someone that I liked at all, ever. At any point in the book. I mean, the only character I ever really liked, besides, I will say Sky grew on me by the end. Um, I didn't love her at first. I was a bit irritated with her. After yeah. Algiers was the point at which I was like, okay, I think I could get with it. And then, like, the longer the book went on, the more I liked So by the end, when she was like, I'm going to fuck with Elizabeth, I was like, you know and what? And then at the end, she was like, oh, my revenge is just being feeling sorry for her. She doesn't have this great family like I do. I mean, like- she did... 
steal a whole bunch of her money. And- yeah, I respected that. But she, then she, she did, like, jail. carry out her vengeance. I'm like, no, just do revenge. Don't go to jail. Well, she did do oh. revenge. And then also got revenge by and not then, being And jailed. then after she learned her lesson and she was just going to pity her. And I'm like, what if you, like, killed her? Well, she couldn't kill the Queen of England. I just think she could have. Just well, a little probably just a little not. Killing. Just, just it a little is bit. the Queen of England. Um, and I think history I mean, would have gone differently if an Irish woman had murdered the Queen of England. I think that's a banger of a book right there. Um, probably not. Where was I? Wait, yeah. I had a point that I was working towards. What were we talking about? Vengeance. Oh, that's when I liked Sky. The only character mm. other than Sky that I ever really liked was uh Adam. That giant yeah. guy that she just kind of like had sex with for a while, and then was like, "Yeah, I'll help you rob the Queen of England," and then yeeted off to his island i thought it was fun how like all the guys got together and like (laughs) yeah like foiled the false imprisonment or like i mean technically not false because like she she (laughs) She was guilty she She did do the crime (laughs) but they kind of like oceaned eleven it yeah so like yeah i thought that was funny yeah like there were just so many books within this book sure well it was like an epic Uh, yeah and like so like that happened and i had a little chuckle <laughs> we had ourselves a little chuckle <laughs> i as had a little the queen chuckle would say i was like okay and then it was immediately ruined by dudley having his little i mean first of all the whole thing with elizabeth i was like oh okay and then she was like i don't want this man named dudley or robert <laughs> dudley and then he was like you're your bitch and then um, he goes out in the hall, storms out, almost knocks lettuce, lettuce. I don't know how to say her name besides it's the lettuce. vegetable. Lettuce. Cool. Um, oh, you didn't do the audiobook? Yeah, I did. Oh. I can't say it. Like, I say lettuce, but then, like, in my head, I'm just saying lettuce, you know? Well, it is lettuce. It's not like Justine Eyre said a little bit less like lettuce. <laughs> well, it's not <laughs> like, lettuce. It's, not- it's lettuce. I know. But I guess how I say lettuce, it just sounds like it. So it's just fun <laughs> to be like, ah, uh, he's just having a good time with a green leafy monster um and i was just so like so then he's like oh i'm so angry and she's like but you could just have sex with me instead and he's like okay that that sounds fun hockey fresh i suspect that it was meant to hint at his real life eventual marriage to lettuce which is great i mean like you said like if you're viewing this as like his like romantic historical fiction i guess but like i don't have the prerequisite knowledge to ever care about someone named Robert Dudley and or Lettuce and their real life well terrible marriage. And also I suspect that they will play a role in the second book. I think you should read it. I don't know that I will. I think you should. Um You almost gave this one fucking five stars. Yeah, but it was less because I actually thought it was good and more out of just respect for the sheer audacity. Also, it made me think about a lot of things. I will say that. It gave me a lot to think about, and it made me, if not shift my views, then at least reevaluate my views on some various things. That's good. It made me want to not think. I immediately watched 10 hours of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. (laughs) I was like, I need to turn off my brain. Like, I just can't imagine getting that manuscript and then, like, being the editor, <laughs> like, I wonder what the first trap, I mean, maybe this was the first trap, and they're like, fuck it, full send. <laughs> and they just did it. Like, I, w- I would be intrigued as to where this thing started and how it was approached. This I wasn't mean, her first book, was it? I don't know. It was written in 1980. Yeah. N- truly not a clue. Um, no, it was not. The Kadeen was in 78. Hmm. Can you imagine just cranking out several, like, I don't know if that was the first. That's just the first one I'm seeing. Books. The problem is, if I'm just, like, on Goodreads looking at her it's hard. Profile, it's hard to know, yeah. Because a bunch of them are, like, published in 2005. And yeah. I'm like, was it actually, though? Or is it yeah, a re- just re-ejected? Issue? Yeah. Um, but at the very least, 1978, she had a couple of books come out. Um, so I don't know if there are any before mm-hmm. that, but this was not her first book. Caden, I bet, is how you say it, not Kadeen, now that mm. I'm looking at it. But in my defense, I'm thinking about Khalid, so <laughs> just automatically write it that way. Yeah, I don't know. Sky's legacy? What's that? 
Pain and Suffering. Oh, there are more books. Oh, God. There are six Skies Legacy books. And this one involves King Charles the second. So there's a lot going on here. Color me enthused. <laughs> wow. There is truly so much happening. That's a fact. This one, her granddaughter is the lover of Prince Henry Stuart, the king's only grandson. Titillating. <sighs> There's a lot going on here. Um, I... Wow. Were you doing any drugs? So, so, imagine if that was asked on the Goodreads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> were you doing drugs? How many drugs were consumed in the making of this book? I mean, I have to respect her brain. Mine simply I could have not. to run screaming from it. <laughs> I think I get it. You know? You are enlightened. I mean, I wouldn't rec. Here's my thing. I wouldn't just well, recommend this. I don't know. <laughs> Could you imagine? Especially not willy-nilly. I think if yeah. there was somebody like um, Karen, our username is Miss Made in China, um, and she mm. has a, a podcast as well. But when I had posted some of my like notes to be like, what is mm-hmm. going on in this book? She messaged and was like, what does it say about me that this makes me kind of want to read it? And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, I can't recommend it. Someone to comment on Goodreads that too, and I was like, no, I can't you recommend it. People. But I, I can tell you, it's the wildest bodice ripper I've ever read. You know what I mean? Like, I can't yeah. say that you'll like it. But if you want to try it, I'm like, go forth, see what happens. Yeah, I'd be like, no, <laughs> don't. <laughs> have a good life not having read it um yeah i mean that'd be a wild book to recommend like in the wrong circles <laughs> can you imagine i mean it's like it is very much what i imagine people who were like bodice rippers that's what i imagine they think all romance novels are yeah I mean, I have never read so many women fainting after orgasming. Well, that that's my my lesson is when in doubt, faint. <laughs> or when in doubt, faint it out. Like, just they're fainting in all different circumstances. I forgot about coming up with a lesson. I don't yeah. know what other lesson you could take from this. And that's okay. Because I think any other lesson... Fuck Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> I mean, the only other one is possess a young nubile body and small breasts. <laughs> a nubile body <laughs> so true so true you gotta like, have those I, those tiny nipples yeah so tiny she's birthed like 10 children at this point her small but breasts are so small <laughs> i was like good god oh. yeah I will say it was like, ooh, the pirate queen. And I was like, ooh, she's a pirate. And she was like, not really a pirate, except no. for the very end when she was like, again, not really a pirate, but she was in charge of ships. Mm-hmm. And I wanted more pirating. See, it would have been more fun for me if, let's say, like half the bad things happened to her, like at the beginning. And then she just went on this like revengeful rampage <laughs> for the second half, turned into an actual pirate, killed some people, had a great time. I mean, she poisoned some guy. That was fun. So more of that. Um, like, just, like, causing a ruckus throughout, like, the second half. I mean, I think she was too good to, in a lot of these, which, like, commendable, I guess, put through the ringer and, like, so many different things. But, like, uh, she didn't, I don't think she went as hard as she could have. I don't think there were a lot of situations where she could have gone any harder, given her position. No, I mean, given her position, but, like, could have. Like, she, it, she sure did fuck but, up that one guy's life. Yeah. Well, technically, actually, it was that girl that mm-hmm. was with her that gave him that yeah. poison to make him impotent. But, like, also she sold off all of the, the stuff and, mm-hmm. like, slipped out of there and was, like, deuces. Um, but, I mean, I think she couldn't yeah. do anything to Dudley because Queen's favorite. She couldn't do anything to the Queen because she's the Queen. But she did do something to the Queen. She was like, what if for years I stole a bunch of money? And then redistributed it to the poor. And then instead of confessing, 
just giving birth to a baby in prison and then eventually walking free because they got nothing. Or she has her men falsify. Uh. <laughs> sure, sure, as you do. Which yeah. we all aspire to have an entourage of men who are uh-huh. so dedicated to us that they're like, oh, I found this ship full of rotting bodies. What if we convince them that these were the pirates? <laughs> they just happen to have a ship's log that it happens to say that on this day they robbed a Spanish ship and then went pirating. So... We haven't even touched on the, like, racial stereotypes, and frankly, I don't want to, because there's all the, like, Moors and Middle Eastern about this book, and that's a lot of it. There was a lot going on there. Yeah, no. I can't say I wanted to read about it, (laughs) let alone talk about it. I was like, oh, God. And then, like, I read the back of that Unconquer book, I was like, oh. I can't imagine that held up <laughs> in many regards. <laughs> like, oh my god. Like, just reading the bag, I was like, I need to go rinse my eyeballs with some iodine. Get hot water! Get some <laughs> iodine! <laughs> I love her so much. I love that you knew from that quote. Well, that's why I said iodine. It's because oh, okay. I always think, get the iodine! <laughs> <laughs> Lucy from I've been the kissed by uh, a dog. <laughs> Lucy from the peanuts in the Christmas the Christmas episode. special. It yeah. was so specific, That's and stick. you knew so specifically. Oh, oh yeah. And we then there's the other one. We do the. Uh, mm. I'll give you five good reasons. <laughs> one, one, two, three, four, five. Mm? She, Those are good reasons. She lives <sighs> in. The part of my brain where Lilo and Stitch, Stitch holding the holding Lilo's wrist, Myrtle antagonizing her, coming at her. Stitch is like, no, Lilo, don't be the better person. And then Myrtle comes for her mother. And Stitch is like, hands off, go get her queen. <laughs> Whips out the camera. Lilo's like, I'm gonna pound her. Proceeds to pound her. Stitch is like taking <laughs> selfies with it. <laughs> He's taking pictures, documenting. So many men in this book. It was, like, that, I just, everything (laughs) that she did in that show, I was like, you know what, queen, I love the peanuts so much. And then there's, like, another Christmas one where uh, Sally is, like, hockey stick. She has to, like, say Hark, the Herald Angel. She's, like, in a play, and she's very nervous for it. She's, like, practicing. And then Charlie's like, you're going to be good. And he's like, when I get nervous, something about like a hockey stick. And then she's like on stage, she like blacks out. And so saying a hark, she's like hockey stick. And I think about it a lot. There's a tweet. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Hockey stick is my Roman Empire. (laughs) Hockey stick is my Roman Empire. (laughs) Hockey stick. It's giving um, the Schmidt quote that's like (laughs) statistically. Every American thinks about President Lincoln once a day. (laughs) Hockey stick. (sighs) No great pumpkin. (laughs) You haven't even touched on that, King. (laughs) I just want the serenity and the peace of sitting in a pumpkin patch waiting for the great pumpkin (laughs) with the, the youthful vigor and youthful innocence of just knowing and hoping that that great pumpkin is just gonna come out i got a rock i just there are so many quotable things i love the peanuts Mm. i got a rock god (laughs) peppermint patty don't call me sir i think we do the christmas special most frequently Mm. because from that one alone there are just so many they're my personal favorite and most frequently referenced, if I'm being honest. You didn't answer right away. You didn't answer right away. I know when I've been insulted. I know when I've been insulted. <laughs> my favorite and a gift that I use frequently is uh, when Schroeder <laughs> does that. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> just like blows him, like his entire body just goes spitting in the air. Oh, yes. Mm. I, when we went to the Elton John concert, I got my mom and me matching shirts that said the bitches back, which did take some convincing, because my mom was like, why would I wear that? And I was like, Mm -hmm. please. 
I mean, know that you don't believe you, in bitch. foul language. However, please wear this shirt with me. Um, but obviously my dad wasn't going to wear that because he's mm-hmm. the way that he is. Um, and so instead I found him a t-shirt that was Schroeder at his little piano, but Schroeder was actually a little peanut style <laughs> Elton John. And yeah, I, think, I think you put that on social media. So boy, did he like get I've some compliments it. on that it's shirt. so fun. I just think nothing's classier than a Peanuts reference. <laughs> You know, I played Sally Brown in, um, it wasn't the Charlie, you're a, what's the, you're a, you're a good man, Charlie Brown, whatever yeah. the musical is. Yeah. It wasn't that one. It was technically the sequel to it. Mm. But basically it was just another Charlie Brown musical. And I played Sally Brown nice. and I killed it. I just love Sally's commitment to that crush. Yeah. And boy, girl. did I commit to that on stage. Same girl. There's the Easter episode where she's like, she goes shopping and, like, first of all, they use my favorite symphony, Beethoven 7th. Like, they use it to perfection, might I add. Um, it's when, like, Snoopy is having his whole, like, little Woodstock fantasy with their, like, dance with bunnies and stuff. But she's, like, shopping, and she's trying on these shoes. And they're these, like, blue pumps. And she knows she can't walk in them. But she's like, but I could if I just try hard enough. And weren't we all, and still are... <laughs> People who think we can walk in shoes we shouldn't be walking in <laughs> because we're just so uncoordinated. And it was just so funny. Just like one, it was just such an appealing like look of like the shopping mall. Like I just want to live in there. And then like two, she just really committed to making a fool of herself in that shopping mall. It was so good. We watched like seasonally like all of the, like oh, all okay. different ones. Yeah, we I feel like the Christmas put one on the put on the Halloween really or well. not the Halloween the the Easter one every now and then it's a good it's a good one. I mean, <sighs> I just whatever the one is where she's writing a letter to Santa. Yeah, I think that that's like the for real estate. Because mm-hmm. um, <laughs> she's so funny, and Charlie Brown is like, "What do you mean?" And she's like, "Or just send cash." <laughs> I was like, "She's so me." I usually identify with Lucy. Yeah, but sometimes Sally comes out with some bangers. Mm-hmm. Gotta shout out my girl Marcy too. She's hilarious. And Peppermint Patty. My I girl just... Marcy. <laughs> I just they're okay. They just there's something so relatable about that show. Because every now and then you're like, yeah, I am Charlie Brown. I'm oh, my dad is Charlie Brown. He's the most Charlie <laughs> Brown person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> just feel so bad yeah. for that bald little boy. <laughs> <laughs> isn't there all bald little a boy. small bald little boy inside of us <laughs> that's a quote from something else i don't think that it is within every girl there's a boy it's from she's the man oh. <laughs> well in sky o'malley's case there usually was and only sometimes was it by choice small child and they were grown as men only at the very God. beginning she was young for a lot of that i mean a lot of that book felt longer. By the time she got to Algiers, she was like nineteen or something. <laughs> so seasoned. <laughs> well, at least she wasn't fifteen. <laughs> and her stepmother was thirteen, so I guess. Yeah. Slay Anne. Yeah, I would have liked more on Anne. She was a compelling random. Uh, I wanted know. more of Eileen personally. We got her at the beginning, and then we got her again at the end. Yeah, uh, the she end. had some fun. I didn't like her much at the beginning, but I liked her at the end. Oh, I thought she was a bad bitch. Mm-hmm. I was like, if you were a badder bitch, you could have just. I don't know. Well, not. again, she was like a nun. She wasn't all powerful. She was a woman she in the fifteenth century in Europe. She could have been a work of fiction in my heart. But she it's like semi-realistic fiction. I mean, I just... If anything, mm. I feel like one of the major points was to show the plight of women. And I felt it. Plight was felt. Look at all the plight, kids. So much plight. <laughs> plight. The palm plight. More plight. Plight squared. A dish of plight. Plight is a garnish. <laughs> a big plate of plight. Smell a little helping a plate. Mm-hmm. More plate. I just. Are, okay, are you done with the, the bit? Yeah. Not a, yeah. A, an extra heaping spoonful of plate. <laughs> Perhaps a little after dinner plate just to top you off. 
<laughs> I'm full. <laughs> Just a whiff of thin... <laughs> a whiff of thin mint. <laughs> of plight. <laughs> Wafer thin. Or girthy. There's some girthy plight. There was some girthy plight. There was mm-hmm. that. Let's revisit my notes. What else was there? Honey oven. We covered that. Incredibly specific amnesia. I'm just coming back to I've fallen in love with you, bitch. I've fallen in love with you, bitch is a good one. I I really feel like we covered them all. You know, I thought we started off really wild with the legal cuckolding thing, which apparently, according to some reviews I read, is not a real historical thing. It's just a thing that has been used in fiction like that. Um, so that couldn't really have happened. However, I was still like, wow. This man showed up and said, I will be taking your wife's virginity on her wedding night. Or I'll yeah, kill you. Wild. And I thought I mean, that I was I thought he was just going to like steal her away. Sure. At the end of that book, Or by the end of that book, rather, that didn't even rank on the wild. Yeah, that 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 didn't phase me so much. I was like, okay, cool. At least it's with him. At that point, I was like, okay, he's at least better than the Dom or whatever that guy's name was. Sure. Um. So like, I was like, okay, and then like, he got. Oh wait, another quote. I did. I did like. Uh, tap lightly on the head, rendering him unconscious. I just love how they were like, yeah, he was tapped lightly on the head and he's unconscious and has and can't. Yeah. Um, that was wild. I'm like, dude, you could have really like just went and found her father. You you were like you could have well, he couldn't though. I know. Because he was Anne in was with in the labor. Wife. But I'm like, dude, do something. Um if he he's had like a, literally a there. belated speak now moment, but alas. So belated and so wild. But he he spoke. He spoke. He did. Yeah, he spake. Um, so that was great. I mean, I think the capstone, the pinnacle of this book, was when she was like, "Man, this is like my husband's trash, but like his sister just really fucking sucks." And then I was like, "No, we're not going there, are we?" Because she was like, I, I did that too. I was like, no, because 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 she was like, where is Dom? He hasn't wanted to have sex with me. Like, I'm happy about it, but where is he? And then she's like, I haven't seen Claire. And then I was like, no, I was like, no, I'm like no. And I was like, no. And again, I was like, no, God, no, please. What happened? Just the most. I mean, incest. Full frontal, fully fledged. <laughs> well, fully, technically, fully strictly speaking, it was from the back. I mean, that's also... I mean, there were mul- multiple things that happened in that scene. Sure. Um, well, and then they both raped her. So, yeah, you have that on top of it. That's one of the things. Yep. That was the thing that was done. Um, I do think it was interesting later when she has this, like very specific amnesia and can recall her name and how to speak languages and stuff but literally nothing else i did find it kind of fascinating that there was this idea of like being able to learn sexual pleasure but even though she has this amnesia she Mm -hmm. still had that trauma response yeah like she doesn't remember why but she's Mm -hmm. like nope don't i don't like that and i do and even it was like not being touched by another woman but also that like the knowing attitude of the Mm -hmm. eunuch was off putting to her to the point where she was like no i don't know why but no Mm -hmm. what an experience you know when you get amnesia and end up in a harem being trained to be a concubine thankfully no but then you're so like, your bod is just so banging that the guy in charge is like, oh, I'm actually going to wipe you up. I was like, even amnesia is ruined. <laughs> I was like, wow. This is a bad day for people named Hannah from Minnesota. <laughs> I was like... (laughs) 
I was like, I was like, actually, amnesia makes this actively worse for me. I was like, what is this? What is this matrix? What is this Twilight Zone I have entered? I was like, please, God, girl, remember your memory. Like, just please. And it lasted so long. And I was like, no. No. (laughs) Just the fact that she was, like, popping out babies like incrementally throughout this book two of them and her husband die i mean she just the trail of dead husband i mean she does make a joke about it at one point (laughs) where he's like like, are you sure because like (laughs) previous husbands did not fare well (laughs) i'm just like that's why it was just such a weird book because like you had the real historical figures and then you had just like whack-ass like like things ha- and it was just so hard for me like reconcile you just gotta be there for the vibe all that happened and then she's and then and then she's still trying to like say that oh yeah but these people were real so like nothing crazy can happen to them that would be historically inaccurate <laughs> and this stuff maybe wasn't historically inaccurate i don't know i wasn't there thank god i mean there was a My, lot of dedication to, to food and clothes she yeah. researched nothing else. She researched the hell out of the food and the clothes. Mm-hmm. Again, something I genuinely, generally, and genuinely don't... <laughs> well, food is different than clothes. Clothes I could get... Like, I don't care about. Um, food is food is interesting. I mean, food back then doesn't quite appeal to me. It scares me more so. Um, but yeah, she loved her... Her I mean, I think a lot of it, I mean, she went really overboard, I think, sometimes with it, but I think a lot of it is to be period indicators. Yeah. Because once you get into, like, he's wearing red striped hose with, like, these this doublet, I'm like, okay, I know, I may not know what year we're in, but I, I know the vibes. I know that I'm uncomfortable. I was not uncomfortable with hose and doublets. What know. kind of a Shakespeare girly would I be? That's so true. That is so true. Earlier I today, my dad made a joke about using the word wherefore <laughs> and then was like, and because you are well educated, you know mm-hmm. that wherefore actually means why. And I didn't say it because I was in the middle of doing something. But in my head, I was like, it's not that I'm well educated and that's why I know that. It's that I'm pretentious and I need to know things that make me look smarter than everyone else. <laughs> So I locked in at a very young age that wherefore in the context of Romeo and Juliet is why. And that was my trump card. I'm smarter than all of you. She's on the playground going up to little kids being like, hey, I'll give you $10 if you tell me what wherefore means. No, but I was in the sixth grade carrying around a leather bound volume of the complete works of William Shakespeare for my free reading time. Were you ripped? (laughs) <laughs> no i should have been honestly been heavy as hell it was heavy it hurt my shoulder real bad <laughs> she is <laughs> just jacked sixth grader <laughs> they're like just one just arm go to the you just, it was just one arm <laughs> like, do you just like work out all the time no i do a lot of reading i just carry my leather bound lifetime works of william <laughs> the bard shakespeare uh, <laughs> Will it be? Um, that is so funny. That is... <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a good old Trapper Keeper. <clears throat> it wasn't filled with Shakespeare, though. No. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I learned oh, some of my favorite dirty jokes come from <laughs> Shakespeare. He is he is funny. I that's why I like um Tessa Dare's The Duchess Deal isn't my favorite of her books. It doesn't even rank in like my top five, but I sure do love Ash and his Shakespearean insults. Just like I think pro- get progressively like wackier as that series goes on. He's just like in the background, cursing out little lamb in full Shakespearean. Legality, I don't know. Um, what a guy. What a guy. Also a weird vigilante. Shows up and He is. I always forget that part of the room. Book. I forget it every time. I mean, he literally just, like, shows up 
in that man's room. Makes the dude pee himself. It's like, mission accomplished. I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> he has a little youth. He's a street youth next to him. Youths! Youths! He's got his little youth. He's got a lot going on. There's a lot going on in that book. As there should be. Too true. Too mm. true. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I have nothing left. Yeah. Nothing left I to am give. Em- I am an empty well. I am in a drought. Well, you just gotta get through Never Cross a Highlander. Yeah, yeah, I do. Fill I'm that like, well right back up. That is so true. And then I, I got the audiobook on Neck Alley for a, the noble, a Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel, which I've already read and I loved that book. And, like, it's the same narrator as book one, so, like, not my favorite narrator, but, like, I feel like he made do it a little bit more for me in this one than the first one. I w- just wasn't a fan of how he did um, Joss's voice, I think. Um, but, God, that book was so good. So I might just have to, like, reread that one. Like, that's the, like, kooky that I like. That book was so good. Mm. Well, I have a mm. I have a Jeannie Lynn audiobook that I got mm. that I'm excited for. You have the Sherry Thomas. Mm-hmm. Is that Which, book one in a series, or is there? I think it is before it. Um, That's good. It's good although it's not, beguiling the beauty, if you weren't aware. Yeah, if you are not a part of my Fable book club, rip your own. Bodice. What are you doing? Well, I mean, I get it. Uh, but if you, I don't, if you are interested in joining, uh, it it is number one in the Fitzhugh trilogy. Um, cool. Ah, ravishing the heiress is number two. Okay, because you hear about okay. her. Like, I remember he, you kind of hear about the character mm-hmm. in Beguiling the Beauty in, like, the background of flashbacks and things, but you never quite know what's going on. Gotcha. So, that's probably why. Um, but, yes, you can find the Fable Book Club in – I mean, if you go to l- my link, there's mm-hmm. a link in my, like, whatchamacallit, link tree type thing. Stacks on, stacks on, stacks on, stacks. Yeah. So, um – That'll be a fun. It's like a read read. at your own pace book club, Mm -hmm. and we do a new historical romance every month. And you just put your thought, like you you put them in like the chapter, and you just vibe. You just vibe. That's it. It's like the lowest commitment. There's no like meeting or anything to discuss. You just take your notes and respond as you go. Mm Hmm. It's Uh a good way to cross some things off the old TBR. Yeah, that's kind of how I've been. Mm-hmm. doing it and then we oh, like this, this last election you had i was like i don't, I mean i voted for i think ravishing the arrows because i'm like well i might as well like read or not ravish the the guy in the yeah, beauty because yeah. then i was like it's sherry thomas like that seems like a fun time but there were like all of them i was like how do i even choose yeah that i try to just i mean sometimes there's a theme but generally i will just well like the the last month i was they were all scottish mm-hmm. um and then I'm pretty – oh, one month they were, like, all fairy tale related because I was trying to read yeah. more of those. So, basically, it's me going into my Goodreads Want to Read shelf and just pulling four that I'm, like, mm-hmm. I would be down to read these. Mm-hmm. I do sometimes – I'll do, like, one old school and or, like, try to vary – have, like, an old yeah. school option and one that's newer and mm-hmm. – but it's pretty much just based on vibes. But I love Ravishing the Heiress, so – We'll see about this one. So between that, yeah. I downloaded something else, too, that I was like, ooh. I just got the new Megan Frampton on that galley. Oh, I downloaded uh, Notorious Pleasures and Scandalous Desires. Because ooh. Scandalous Desires is technically a pirate Oh, romance. that's Elizabeth Hoyt? Yep. But it's number oh. three. And you know how just, I am about series. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed number two. Uh, just know that in the pirate one, the audiobook is fucked up. Like, oh, yeah. you will get to a sex scene. And then, like, she's, like, stroking I, yeah, I his dick. Yeah, you're talking about this. Yeah, she's, like, stroking his dick. And then, literally, it, like, the next, like, sentence is, they were fast asleep. And he was, like, still inside her. I was like, what? I'm, like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I was like, did she, did she get me close to her? And then, and then I kept, and then, and then I like got my physical copy because I was like, "I ah, this is unacceptable." And then I like read the scene and I was like, "Oh, 
well, that was just omitted. I was like, what the hell happened? I was like, censored in this house? Um, and then it came up. And then, like, he has, like, a whole letter that he reads that, like, happened uh, wildly out of order. And then, like, the random sex scene was, like, inserted, like, a percentage later. Like, Who it was knows? just so out of order. And I'm just like, how has this never been fixed? It's been out for, so, like, 10 years. Who knows? I don't know. I, I was so confused. I was like, I was so ready for the sex scene too. And then I was like, huh? It was bonkers. That was a good book. Yeah. So I still enjoy, I really enjoyed book one. Wicked Intentions. Mm-hmm. It, it went a lot harder than I thought it was going to go. I liked it a lot. I mean, it, it does have one of my favorite historical romance tropes, which is man I'm so who is, wicked. Well, there's that, but the man who is so notorious for being- Exactly. Like, I'm so- Yeah. And then it's just like- I mean, this one at least had the authenticity of people were getting murdered in that style. True. So true. <laughs> and so, well, and also, he was, like, touch averse. So there was yeah. that element of it. Yeah, that was part that, that he was, was unique like, as well. oh, I'm so horrible and I like to have sex Yeah. Name deeply perverse ways was just him being into like bondage and blindfolding hilarious i eat it up every time and i just i really loved him it's like at the end saint vincent that was funny he said oh a wife could never give me what i want and then proceeded to tie her up once the best slump breaker or not even slump breaker just like boringness breaker was reading the raven elves over again um Although, like for the record, my... that scene was very hot. Using her corset laces to tie yeah. her arms behind her back. Banger. I think I upped my rating on that one to five stars. I think I Honestly, gave it four I get at the that. beginning. I there do. There's a lot. Like, there are some very loved... romantic quotes in that one. When also. he thought she was dying, I, I loved that. I love a good character who thinks the other one's dying. That was fun. That's a fun book. Um, yeah, you. There's a line about like how he notices she really does walk in circles, and very early mm-hmm. on, by the way, they don't know each other very well yet. Uh, and he has a thought about like wanting her circles to always lead back to him. He's such a simp. I noticed Gabriel, how much of a simp he was. Such a, from like, the get go. Yeah, yeah. Like I think because I, I was like when I listened to it the first time, like it just didn't hit as hard. Same thing with a uh, book one, mm. Cold Hearted Rake, but um. Like, I was paying more attention this time, I think. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, why do, like, so many people like this? And then I was, like, really trying to pay attention. I was like, oh. Because he's just, he's, like, so down for her. Like, he he does not care. He's like, yeah. He basically also just doesn't have a personality outside of and that, being it was in love so, with like, life. And that's why it was, like, such a weird book. Because I'm like, only Lisa Kleypas could do this so well. Yeah. That, like, shit still happened. Yeah. And it was, like, you have random, like irish smuggling yeah. like, like it it was just i think it was irish i think i think so too I yeah it had to do with the rebellion yeah um like it i was it was oh yeah. that was a good one. Oh, now i'm in the mood to read lisa clay i will do 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 no it. i'm gonna read Jeannie lynn okay we'll do that and then and it's gonna dabble be dabble in the lk that novella Hit. This is I'm, the one I'm reading is from the series I had already started, mm-hmm. not from that series, mm-hmm. but I do want to read that series as well. This one, he's like the bad guy in the first book. He's like a warlord, oh, and she's like the head or used to be a mm-hmm. head like concubine, and now just like but, but we met her too. Listen, mm-hmm. I'm excited. I do love a good villain in one book turned um hero. Yeah, yeah. Outrageous by Minerva Spencer. There are like two. Like, I think they may be independently published by Kerrigan Byrne. She writes some wild things. Um, I don't know if they're indie, but I don't know. They have audiobooks, so. Um, Seducing a Scoundrel is like, they're, it's like the good girls, but on, on Goodreads, it's very confusing, like, how they all connect. Uh, but, like, there were, like, two brothers who were technically the villains, and then they both get a book. Um, that's a, that is also a wild series. But yeah, I don't. Oh yeah, I was looking at my neck alley. Um, Who I also have. Dana sent me. Um, Lady Charlotte all, always gets her man. I want to say it's. Uh, they just. Is that that fun illustrated cover one? Yeah. Nice. I think. Oh, I like also a mystery. have. 
Yeah, I have never wagered with a wallflower by Virginia Heath. And I've been putting it off because I want to reread at least book two. Um, because I love I love that book so I love the audiobook. Like the narrator did such a good job. Um but like I haven't like had the time to like reread that. So I'm like edging that. I have the catch by Amy Lee. I'm so excited for that. So ready. Betting on you by Lynn Painter. Her yeah. adventures in I saw a bunch of contemporaries I need to read because, like, I started yeah. the uh, Rajes, the like mm. the the uh, Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors mm-hmm. is the first one, and like mixed feelings on that one. But I've heard the rest of the books in the series are mm-hmm. better than the first one, and also like I enjoyed it. Like mm-hmm. I I would like to read the rest of the books. So I have like the other three books in that series, and then I have the second um, Alexis Daria. I read. You had me at Ola. Uh-huh. I, so I, wanna read I think you gave that, that. Did you give that with like three? I, I really like that book. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, it, the production side of it bothered me mm. a lot. And maybe that's the theater major in me, which I realized mm. theater and film are different. But there were like certain things that I just didn't get. And then the conflict didn't do it for me. Mm. Honestly, most of the relationship didn't do it for me. So I was like, this is fine. Mm-hmm. But like I, I liked the writing style, and I've heard most mm-hmm. people prefer the second to the first. So. I, I think I liked book one better, but the the second was still really good. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, that's why so many things end up on my TBRs because they're like in series, and I'm like, but if I read one, I need to like immediately read the next ones, unless I like severely hate it. Um, so then I'm like, but I could just wait because I don't have time for like all those books. Like I don't want to get that committed, and then it's a whole rabbit hole, and then I just end up rereading things. <sighs> pain yeah oh gosh well the yeah. slump do be slumping but on the plus oh, side yeah. there's no race this weekend so at least I have more time <sighs> yes. I know I've got books all over my room that need to be on a shelf because I got like I added some more bookshelves so those are, like, filled up by, like, author, which is nice. So then I'm like, well, why not just alphabetize everything else? And I'm waiting for the weekend, so I'm just in a state of chaos right now. And I'm like, I should have taken a picture for Bookstagram before I tore apart my shelves. So now I'm just like, well, <laughs> sucks to suck. Rip. So we shall see what I do. Because <laughs> truly, I don't know. Uh, no, not to my mind. Okay. Well, when in doubt, faint. That that's all I got. I have nothing to add to that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, mm. tune in next week for something. Yeah, our next episode is gonna be fun. Teehee. So, trust us. I agree. Or don't. And just fuck around and I, find out. That's so true. <laughs> I mean, at this point, like, we are two wolves living inside you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. We represent no, the no, two no. wolves. <laughs> just leave it at that. <laughs> we are the two wolves inside you. <laughs> inside every woman is a man. <laughs> Inside everyone is a small, bald boy. <laughs> Inside each of you live the two wolves that are us. <laughs> we Hot bitches. <laughs> we fall in love with you. My little hot bitches. <laughs> wow. These wolves, man. They're crazy. They I are. Don't know. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done talking. Ow, ow, ow! Don't. <laughs>